Hi, I'm Marilyn. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to um, make some shades of red paint. So right here I have some cadmium red and we're going to um, mix light and dark shades and show you how to get warm and cool reds, although red is basically a warm color. Um, the first thing I wanted to show you is most people, in order to lighten their red, they add a lot of white. And I mean, you add white to anything, you're going to lighten it. But the problem with adding white to, um, to the red is you mostly end up with pink. And even a tiny bit of uh, white added to the red is going to give you a pink shade. So, and the more you try to lighten it with white, the pinker you're going to get. So now we have pretty much pink. I'll show you on a piece of uh, watercolor paper. See how pink that is? I don't know if you can see it very pink. A better way to lighten your red paint would be to add yellow. So we're going to test it out with a little bit of cadmium yellow. Probably too much there. And let me clean off my... So you don't want to contaminate your paint with the other colors. So we're going to take a little bit of red again. This is cadmium red, but you can use whatever red you got. And a lot of paint mixing is experimenting with what you got because of color bias. And it's a whole other video. <laughs> so we're going to take a little bit of yellow. This is cadmium yellow as well. And we're going to add it into our red paint. Now, generally, red and yellow make orange. And you're going to see that I probably used a little bit too much. Oh, well, maybe not. So I've got a lighter pink, right? Redder, or lighter red, sorry, redder than the pink that we initially got with the white. See, it's still lighter, but it's not pink. And I'll put a little bit of the cadmium, the regular, <clears throat> the unmixed cadmium down so you can see that I did get a lighter paint. Right? <clears throat> now you can continue adding your yellow into your red, but at some point you're going to get orange. So the best thing to do is add little bits at a time, mix it in, and if you do end up with an orange, you, you know, you get it, you have too much yellow in there, you can always ba add back in some, some of the red paint to make it a little darker. So now we have <clears throat> almost orange, not quite, but it's definitely a lighter color than we had. I have too much water for that. You can um, also use different yellows. Um, let's see what I got here. If I can get this open. This is... It won't come out. So, this is Azo yellow. So, we're going to try a little bit of that. One thing you got to remember when you're doing a video, make sure all your bottles open before you start. And since I'm new to this, it's a lesson learned. Now we're going to take some of our red. And when I'm mixing paint, I, I always like to mix, I like to, to have a, a blob of my base color and mix into that redder than the other way around. Especially when you've got a dark color like red. Uh, because if you're mixing it into a lighter color, it's easy to overwhelm the color with the darker color, 
Okay. So now this is turning out to be a beautiful red color. That's lighter than the cadmium, but not orange. Now if I were to keep going, I could actually get orange. So, like I said, do it in moderation. So now we have various shades of light, light red, right? The other yellow you could use too is um, um, yellow ochre. And yellow ochre is a more earthy yellow. Yeah, you can see it's like almost a browny yellow. So if you mix that into your red, you're probably not going to get a light red. You'd get a more earthy, uh, deeper red. Let's see what we get. So a little bit of yellow ochre to start. And mix it into the red. And you can see that it's toning down the red quite a bit. So you get an earthy, almost mm, browny type red. So you can see it's, it's um, a duller red, maybe. So there are, there are hundreds of combinations. It depends on what you have in your paint box. And play around with them until you get the color that you want. Now, if you want uh, to get to darken your red, take a big blob here. Uh, to darken the red, you can add a blue. Now, again, red and blue make purple. So you've got to go slow. So this is ultramarine. So we're going to mix a little bit of our ultramarine into our cadmium red. And hope not to get purple. I mean, you can keep adding the red or the blue or both until you get the, the color that you want. Now, the ultramarine blue made a deep, dull red, I guess you would call it. <clears throat> and you can see here. So it's almost like a burgundy. There are other reds you can, or other blues you can add to your red to get uh, different shades. Um, right here I have phthalo blue. And we'll add a little bit of that to here to some red. So a bit of phthalo blue. I probably took too much that time. Mix it in and we'll see. We can always add more red. And it is definitely, it's dark, <laughs> but it's not as red as I would like. Now, I will show you this before I add the more red to it. It's almost a black. So it's too much blue. So we're going to add in more of our cadmium. <clears throat> uh, cadmium. So we're going to add a little bit more cadmium in there. Still not enough for my liking, so add a little bit more. So I probably initially took way too much blue. And I've been telling you to go slow and take little bits at a time, and of course I didn't do that, so that's what happens. So it's good to learn what not to do as well, right? So now we have also a deep dark 
red as compared to our ultramarine. It's more of a, a cherry red, I guess a dark cherry red. Like, like I know you think cherry red is bright, but there are dark black cherries, right? It's a lovely dark color. Now, if you want to make the uh, the red a dark, cool red, then you can <clears throat> add some purple. So I have some diox dioxanine purple. There we go. And this time we'll add a little bit like I told you. <laughs> so we start with a little. Because it's much easier to add more if you need it. It's harder to take it away, eh? So. so. Now this is a nice cool red. You can make it, you can probably go a little darker if you need to. I'm just gonna try a little bit more just to give you a little bit of an idea. The problem, I, I shake. So sometimes I grab way too much paint and then I have to go fix my mistake. But it's nice to know that everything can be fixed. So, this is more of a, it, it's a dark um, red, but it's still a bit brighter than our previous one. So what if you wanted to dull down your red? What if you didn't want this like really bright red? So when you want to dull down a color, you use the complement of that color, which is the color that it's opposite on the color wheel. So for our red, the opposite color on the color wheel would be green. So in order to dull down the red, so you didn't want it this lovely bright color, we're going to, uh, um, add in some phthalo green. Phthalo green is a beautiful green color. Then try and mix a little again. And you can see as I'm mixing, it is darkening the color because phthalo green is a, t a, a bit of a dark color, but it's also dulling it down. So you're, you're not getting bright reds, right? And you could probably, you, know, you can see, it's hard to tell on a <clears throat> video monitor. <clears throat> but that's all the more reason to play around with it at home yourself. So we're gonna add a little bit more green to see what we get. probably have too much green there now, and I do. So we'll go back to our red, add some more red. <clears throat> and keep mixing until you get the, the color you want. I think I need a little bit more. You just keep going until you, you get your desired dark muted red. Um, you can also try other greens to get a different uh, tone or hue. Um, this one I'm using Hooker's Green and it's a more, you can tell the difference between that and say, well, this is a more um, opaque earthy green. So we'll try that. And see what you get. A little bit again. Mix it in. You can see how it's toning it down. It's not darkening it, but it is toning it down. 
So you're getting a more earthy red. <clears throat> and as I said, you can keep going. Keep adding more in until you get the red color that you want. You can definitely tell the difference. You can see from this card all the different uh, tints and tones and shades that you can make of red or of any color for that matter. Um, The best thing I can tell you to do is when you're, uh, when you get a new tube of paint, sit down and start mixing and make um, little charts to yourself of the mixes and what they turn out to be. But then you can go back and reference them in future paintings if you want a particular color and you can't remember how to mix it or you don't want to waste the paint to try and figure it out. You have your cards to show you. Um, the paint mixes so I have like little swatches plus the uh, oh, sorry I have little swatches plus the uh, the formula for the mix right these are just um, watercolor paper that I cut in quarters in big sheets that someone had given me and they were kind of beat up so I cut them in quarters and use them as swatch cards and just put a little clip on the top to keep them together and then you always have them for future reference Anyway, there are, are other mixes of red. I didn't show you the warm mix. Ah. Again, next note to self next time. Open all your paint. <laughs> okay, to make a warmer red, we're going to add a little bit of, of orange. This is cadmium orange. Uh, and it's a big blob. That came out. Oops. going to take some more red. Um, here. Always wipe your knife off because you don't want to contaminate all your bits of paint, especially if you're making like a swatch card or uh, even a painting. Because even a little bit of a different color can contaminate your paint and you won't get the color you want. So. Now we're mixing a little bit of the orange into the red. Of course, orange is a mixture of red and yellow. So you're gonna kind of deepen your red, but at the same time, you're gonna warm it up. Although red is already a warm color, but sometimes you want it like even warmer. So now you have this beautiful warm red, great for sunsets. I'm running out of space. <laughs> it's a beautiful warm red. <coughs> Excuse me. And it is different than our our previous um, cadmium red. And you can also use other reds other than uh, cadmium, whatever you happen to have. And it's a good idea to sit down and play around with the colors that you have so that um, you know what can be mixed with what because sometimes the type of red that you have like I have this alizarin crimson which is it tends to be a really deep dark red as you can see it's very dark on the monitor it almost looks black um, so if you mix um, let's see so you want to lighten this up. So we're going to go back to our cadmium yellow and add a little bit in. So you're going to get a totally different um, tone. This is more earthy looking red than the orangey looking one that we had up here, right? So you remember that too, that it depends on the red that you start with and not all mixes will look good with the base color so that's why it's important to do your your uh, swatch cards swatch everything out know what you got 
and what can be mixed with what. And then that helps you too to also decide what you need to buy because artist paint is really expensive and getting more so. So you don't want to be buying unnecessary paint or wasting. So the swatch cards are, are a great idea. Anyway, that's it for the red paint mixes. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And thank you for watching.